Get ready for another episode of the B&B Lawn Care Podcast, a show that helps you stay positive, overcome challenges in your business, and most importantly, help you make more money in your lawn and landscaping business. Here's your host, Blake Albertson. Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's a big day here because we have my buddy, Keith Kalfas, on the line. What's going on, Keith? Yeah, <laughs> Keith just hit one hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, dude. Let's I was I was there. I don't know what the number was, but dude, I'm betting that it was like below a thousand subscribers when we became friends. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was. It was the very beginning. Yeah, that's, dude, that's crazy. How, how does that feel, dude? That's a lot. That's a long time, a lot of work, a lot of late nights, a lot of time missed with your family. Yeah, dude. Well, actually, no, I would, uh, you know, hang out with my wife till she goes to sleep, pet my little dogs and my kids, and then I would get up and go stay up till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I just slept four hours a night for like seven years until I ended up my, I could barely hang on by a thread. <laughs> Just, I wanted it so bad that it was a, actually a tremendous amount of sacrifice in good and bad ways. And, uh, uh, because there's a there's a purpose behind and a vision behind it all. It's not the end all goal. It's just to hit a hundred thousand subscribers, even though it feels phenomenal. I feel like I have like like a gold like a buck a belt with a big gold buckle on it, or an award I can hang on the wall to say that's proof that I am the real deal. Who I I am, who I said I am. I am like it's like it's finally this piece of a tangible thing. Well, it's digital, <laughs> but that I can look at and say, Oh my God, this is real. And it's a huge re positive reinforcement. It's like having like a brand new, like audio or a 3,500 diesel truck. That's like in your driveway sparkling and you just washed it where you're like, this is actually mine. It's one of those type of feelings that, that I feel even more confident and more encouraged. And I feel, I just, very, very excited and grateful, man. It's a symbol of your hard work, dude. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, dude. That's super awesome. It's real. Dude, that, yeah, thanks, what man. about your play button, dude? Have you ordered, or like, I know you have to, like, submit something, or have you done that yet? Yeah, I, I gotta, no, I haven't. I have to go uh, in the back end of the YouTube dashboard, and they're gonna do this thing. I gotta fill out and apply, and then they'll send it to me. It could take a few weeks, and I'm I'm definitely excited about that. And, um, can I, but well, I want to say, I really it mean it when you get it, huh? can I hold it? I'll get it shipped. <laughs> I'll change the address so it goes straight to your house. <laughs> and then you can take a, a screwdriver and scratch and keep <laughs> help. It sucks. <laughs> I'm just playing. That's hilarious. Well, we're going to get into it guys. I, this is gonna be like a longer form. If you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, just to sit down with Keith. Keith's been in business for, like over 10 years, dude. He knows his stuff. Um, but we're going to get into it here. Two quick announcements, guys. I have worked super hard, and Keith has helped me a ton too. So double subscribe. Go like some videos for him. Uh, at Keith Kelfus on YouTube, right? Correct. He has helped me over the last couple months uh, setting up my website to sell online courses and create online courses. I am now on number two. I've been working on it here for a couple weeks now. Just launched, so I'll, I'll put the link down in the description down below. Use coupon code BB10. Uh, this one is all about advertising, going from like cheap yard signs all the way on how, like the steps to get from that to building a brand that people want to support and get behind and building true friend clients. True friend is in like, they're going to refer you to their friends, their neighbors. So check that out, guys. Super cool. I, I think it's going to really, really help you guys out. Also, uh, a lot of you guys know that we use LMN software. They're huge supporters of the lawn care community as a whole. Huge supporters here at B&B Lawn Care. They're a great sponsor. And Dude, just Element Software has helped me a ton. They just launched a new update. 
uh, with Site One integration, the Element Free now has Element Time for time tracking with your employees. Super cool! Like you, you can have an account for your employees on your phone, iPad, computer. Uh, so check out that. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Also, they just let me know that you guys can get twenty five percent off the Fast Track program using code Blake twenty five. So. Super awesome. Now, let's get back in to the interview with Keith Kalfas. All right, Keith. So today, yo, I, yo. I kind of wanted to talk about success, dude. Like, what what, what else could we talk about, man, and how we can be successful in 2021? How's that sound? Yeah. That, I love like, it. That's what Keith and I talk. I, I told Keith. I'm like, we probably have like a, an hour-long conversation every few weeks and it's all about how, how are we going to be successful in what we're doing and how can we help people be successful? So I'm like, Keith, let's just turn on the recorder and, and talk how we normally talk. I have a couple points here written down uh, that I want to hit. But uh, Keith, like, what are you going into to 2021? What, what's it look like for you? Uh, I'm more excited, more motivated, more inspired, and I feel... Uh, this sense of tangibility, rubber meeting the road of when you have built the foundation uh, and it's strong, now you can start to scale up. You can move faster. You can do things that you previously dreamed of doing because when you take uh, inspiration, but you combine that with structure, um, that's, that's when you can, you can move forward a lot faster versus then just being excited and going and working yourself to death <laughs> or having way too many plans, but not taking action. And everybody, you know, talks about, you got to take a massive action, massive action. And I, you know, I've done that. I know what that feels like. And you can take massive action all the way until you're, you're totally worked yourself to death. And now you're sick and you're sick of taking massive action. Um, we're talking about strategy. Now we're moving into the realm of strategy and I'm just so excited. I think uh, something I really wanted to hit today, and I know you and I talk about this all the time, is starting from the very beginning. I, I, a lot of us start, you know, around March, at least around here in the Midwest. Our spring season starts, you know, mid March. That's just when the weather, the ground's unfrozen, and the weather starts to get nicer, and and that's just when we typically start the landscaping and the cleanups and everything. But it's like that moment. You need to start thinking about winter time, about your future, because in the winter time, like it is right now for you and I, it's you get to think a lot more. And, and there's no, you're not really going out and doing landscaping or lawn mowing. And A, there's no money rolling in from that business. So it's like, how, how in the heck do you build a stable, sustainable, um, foundation for your family and for your business when there's three or four months out of this season or out of the year where there's no money coming in. And, and I have a couple of points and I'd like to hear your take as well, Keith. Um, so, but, but this starts in March. This is what I want people to understand. Like it's so easy to go from making no money, March, April, May, June comes Money starts flowing in. Like if you hustling and like calls are coming in and it just seems like you won the lottery. Like, am I right, Keith? Like that's how it feels. It's like people are calling me, people need me, and I'm just running a million different directions. We've got money coming in, but like that eventually dries up. No calls are coming in. That's just the seasonality of this business. And so like a lot of people make mistakes because when all of that is coming in, like money's coming in, the calls are coming in, you just, you, your mindset shifts and you think you run the world. And if you're making silly financial decisions, purchase decisions based upon, you know, the springtime, you're, you're going to be in for it when it comes wintertime. You know what I mean, Keith? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I think a yeah, lot. I think that. Uh, hmm? Yeah, go, go ahead. You think a lot of what? I, I just think a lot of people, you know, like all, all that comes and, and they don't invest money in the springtime. 
you know, because it's just, we're just so busy, dude. We're making money. Like, let's just figure out how to uh, get the truck that I've wanted and, and get the new mower that I've wanted and this and this. And then winter time comes and you're broke. And it's like, what in the world? And so you got to find a way. Like, it happened when my kids were coming. When my kid, when we knew that we were going to have babies, my entire life, my mindset changed. Because we needed a stable, reliable foundation. Because I can't, I can't just be broke in the winter time. You know what I'm saying? I can't be, I can't be scared um, for how we're going to pay the mortgage or how we're going to pay the insurance or how we're going to pay this or this in the winter time and still be everything that I need to be for my family. So it's like getting springtime, you, you, you need to take care of everything in the winter and, and save for your future and invest for your future before you do anything else. Is that, is that what you do, Keith? Like, dude, I'm telling, I, I've always told people my tax account, my, like, dude, for the whole year and, and my mortgage for the whole year, like in the winter time, I put that aside the, the day I get my very first payment for spring work. Very smart. What 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 strategy do you use? Yeah, there's well, there's strategies and then there's tactics. And you know, the tactics is you're in it and you're doing the thing, but the strategy is the high level overview of looking at why am I doing this and where does this lead to and how does it tangentially connect to everything else within the business in and out and connect to my personal life. And when you start to see that these peaks and valleys or the seasonality, the ups and downs they don't care about you. Your clients don't necessarily care about you. Money doesn't care about you. It doesn't matter how much of it you have or don't have. And when you can detach yourself from all of this and kind of go meta in your mindset, which is hard to do because you have to detach emotionally and look at it all object, object, objectified and start to go, oh, this is what this is. When you face the brutal reality and you see it for what it is, then you can begin to control it and manipulate it and, and run it how you see fit. No longer is your business plugged into your nervous system for survival. It becomes uh, a means to an end. It becomes a car that you drive, a machine. It becomes something that you can now control it. And so I do, uh, of course, have a tax strategy in place. And that is uh, a tax account that money goes in. Uh, it's uh, 30% of all gross annual revenue goes into a specified uh, business savings account that is specifically for that. And it comes out automatically. And then there's a payroll account where money gets transferred into payroll to cover that. But, and when you've been through this through for several years and you see it all happening on paper, or you have a PL statement and you can actually see the, the peaks and valleys, the ebbs and flows, and you know where all your numbers are at, you can actually now look at your business as, look at on, uh, it's, it's cyclical, but look at it annually. What's going on? How much can I pull off of this so I can be running myself a payroll even during the winter months? Depends on where you're at. But here was, if I can bring this down to like right here, right now, if you're not making enough money to even think about all that stuff yet and that stuff, because that was very frustrating. That conversation to me was like, how am I going to even think about everything you're talking about right now, Keith, yeah. uh, the past me when I'm trying to make it through the winter and trying to worry about my truck breaking down from that level. It was like survival mode work constantly. I don't care if it's the beginning of the season, I'm saving for taxes. I'm safe. So I said, but I don't make enough money to do that. Well, yeah. you're going to have to go out and do more jobs and you're going to have to work Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, but then my family, it didn't matter. There was a long period of time, five years, in fact, where I had to go work six to seven days a week constantly and go literally work myself to death to figure out how to sell these jobs, 
to figure out a whole bunch of stuff that I, we can't even talk about in one podcast to, to learn how this works so I can learn how to do it more effectively so it works. Because, dude, I almost destroyed my, my marriage and my personal health and everything just to get my business to a point where it was a stable, functioning business that didn't run my life. And it takes a long time. And some, some people are very smart. If you take an IQ test, you could see, you know, basically you can look at other people's lessons and mistakes and learn and catch on very quickly. And uh, I, I, I caught on very slow. It took me a long time and I paid a hefty, hefty price. And, um, but I said, get in where you fit in, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, we, you, you won't take it so seriously until you're, you know, you've got payments, you've got a house, you've got a family and it's February. There's no work and you've got bills to pay and no money to pay them, then you'll take this stuff seriously, okay? It, it, like, if you're listening to this in the springtime and money's coming in, and this is, a you know, early in your business, you might not take this stuff seriously because it seems like the calls never stop. It seems like, man, we've just got money rolling in the door. But I always tell people, is like, if you're in lawn and landscaping, a normal person gets paychecks 52 weeks out of the year and we get them 30, you know, like literally almost half of the time, uh, half of the year, dude, you know, like that, that's a good mindset to think about is, you know, take half the money to your solution. Yeah. Half you the, just go make, go make almost double the money in those spring and summer and fall months. Yep go work your tail off and have clear communication with the people around you that you love and that love you, that you are going to be a maniacal workaholic. And then after, you know, new years, you'll be able to settle down and spend time with the whole family. I know for me on the month of December, or when we wrap up fall cleanups and all that around Christmas time, I already know all the goals and plans and dreams and all the things Keith wants to do. None of that's going to happen. I'm going to be exhausted. I need to catch up on sleep. Uh, there's so much house cleaning and organizing and so much stuff that's been neglected the entire year that needs to be taken care of and purged through and files and paperwork and taxes and some, and then family stuff and Christmas. Dude, I spent an entire week, uh, it's two weeks just spending time with family and going out to getting breakfast with my dad and seeing my grandmother and family and catching up and being on the phone for hours with all these people that have been neglected the entire year. And then, and then once all that stuff is done and I've caught up on sleep and I've gotten my diet back in order and I'm finally, I wake up one morning and it's peaceful and it's winter, I have money in the bank and now you have a choice. I'm just saying where, where I'm at is like, um, when you get moments of these beautiful, precious moments where you get to choose what you're going to do in this moment, are you going to squander it? by laying around scrolling on social media or are you going to, are you going to focus and plan? Now at some level you have no choice and you don't know any other skill sets, but you just take massive action and make as much money as possible. But what got you here won't get you there. And if you want to get to the next level, you have to go meta and start digging into strategy. You have to start tracking your numbers where your leads are coming in. You have to start seeing where, what type of clients do I have? What kind of clients do I want to have? Uh, how far is my service area? What things am I doing in my business? That's really stupid, but I'm too close to it to see it. That's not making me any money. And you know, you have to start making decisions that are based in strategy and not emotion. And those are things that get you to the next level. And then once you start getting money coming in, maybe you've never had good money rolling in your whole life. And you're like, you can't help but to go and blow it on cool things for your business. And maybe you got your, your, your teenage or childhood robbed of you. And you like, you just want to go buy that cool thing or that toy and you can't freaking help yourself because and here's another thing. If you don't reward yourself with toys and cool stuff and new pieces of equipment that show you, and train your subconscious mind that, you know, you're, you're good and you're doing a great job, then you will become a, a very resentful work workaholic who never rewards yourself. So 
there's there's a lot of mindset revolving around this. But if you can't afford to do that stuff, then you just can't afford to do it. And that's it's a, that's why there's it's so important to be around other entrepreneurs and business owners that are at all different levels, so you can see how this stuff looks inside and out, so you know how to uh, you, you know what you know where you're at and you know what space you're in and then you know where you're going and you can do all this very freely and in a flow like state without uh having negative effects and beating yourself up i mean there are literally guys right now that are listening to this podcast that are traumatized with like ptsd from working so hard in their business and putting out so many fires that they're just in complete survival mode and they're in constant anxiety and they can't get out of it. And they feel like they're hanging off the edge of a cliff. They feel like everything is on the edge of blowing up. And, um, you know, I'll just stop right there. So I don't go down the rabbit hole, but when you're in survival mode or your backs against the wall, it's really hard to see any of this, dude, it's hard to see. How in the world am I going to plan for uh, my taxes in the wintertime, my mortgage in the wintertime? I'm having trouble right now, dude. I'm working my freaking butt off and there's no money coming. Like, there's no money staying. There's mo- always money coming in, but there's no money staying in the bank. It's like, I say this to people all the time. The money is made in the winter time. What in the world, Blake, dude? There's no money. I have no money here in the wintertime. Let me explain. The money's made in the wintertime because it's not always about if I just cut more grass or I just do a couple more landscape jobs, I'll have more money. It's this strategic planning that you can, you have enough mental capacity and power and energy to do in the wintertime that you don't have in the, in the springtime. You can figure out a tax strategy, uh, an investing strategy, a savings strategy in the wintertime and implement it day one when your season starts in the spring and eventually over time, you th- these things will happen. The number one thing, I literally wrote it down as Keith was talking because I didn't want you guys to go without it. When you implement this tax strategy, the saving strategy for like your bills, your your car payments, truck payments, mortgage, insurance, whatever else you have, your gas lights, everything. When you figure out what that number needs to be that you need to start saving for every single, every two weeks or every month, it doesn't matter. Uh, I would do every two weeks if you're just getting started. So then you kind of get into the rhythm of things. You're doing it more than 12 times a year. But once you start doing this, the money. So like I have a payroll account, a tax account, Keith, and, and I think this is so mm-hmm. huge, dude. When I determine what the number is that goes into those accounts. So if I, you know, whatever our payroll is, okay, that money just gets stripped away as I get paid into that payroll account. That's not my money anymore. This is, dude, this changed my life. So like a lot of people base their decisions off of like, well, how much money do I have? You know, can we do this, this, and this? Well, the money that's in those tax accounts, the the money that's in that winter fund account is not counted as my money anymore. It's already it's already delegated to something else. It's it's not my money, dude. That is the payroll money. That's not my money. That's the IRS's money. That's how I think of things. So like I just think that will help a lot of people um psychologically of like When you're putting these money in these different buckets, as I call it, it's no longer treated as your money because it's not. It's going to be gone. So like if you always feel like we have a ton of money in the the wintertime, no, no, a ton of money in the springtime coming in, by the time winter's over, it's all bleeded out of the bank account and I'm back to square one. It's because you didn't tell the money what to do and where to go. And you still treated all of these buckets like they were all your buckets and you could carry them around as you please. But once you dedicate it to something, it's no longer counted as your money, okay? Like it's, it, if it's a tax account, that's a tax account. That's, it, you might as well have wrote the check and you're just waiting for it to clear out of the account. Uh, did that make sense, Keith? Like is that kind of what, what, like what, we, what, what you do and does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's like, it seems that I, I can't even believe that somebody, I can't even, I'm not judging anybody, 
but <laughs> a long time ago, I had a friend in we, downtown Detroit because I live in Detroit. There's a casino. He said, let's go to the casino. I'm like, oh, we're going downtown. So, so he literally blew his whole paycheck in, in 15 minutes on blackjack and he was broke. Yeah. And I was terrified watching him do this. And I've literally have grown up watching people get their paychecks or make money and literally just go squander it and blow it. And then I watch these same exact people like clockwork. They're literally broken. They can't, they can't, they're having these problems and nobody cares and nobody comes to save them. And it's, I'm like, that's like the worst thing ever. But when you don't even make enough money to like, I, I, re, I remember we lived in a one bedroom apartment and I drove a, a piece of crap truck with 300,000 miles on it. I had the cheapest everything and wore clothes from the thrift store and I mean, dude, I've eaten ramen noodles, all types of stuff. But like, I just couldn't even afford to have taxes or insurance or anything because I was that broke and in debt. So my only option that I had was to pull the work harder lever. And I literally worked 90 hours a week in order to figure out how to do all this stuff. And I didn't see anybody else anymore. I, got, I cut off my entire family. I had... Like what I'm saying is I didn't see my family that I love for five years. All I saw was my wife and the, the steering wheel of that work truck and work and bags under my eyes because I knew that the brutal reality was I was broken in debt and I couldn't afford. And I was also terrified that, Oh my God, the tax man is going to come get me there. The insurance company is going to get me. And I wasn't even making, <laughs> but then, it only took a year of doing that to the point where I, cause I was like, Oh my God, I'm making more money. Well, guess what? No, I can't get out of the scrappy one bedroom apartment. I can't get a nicer truck. I have to create a tax account and now start paying taxes. <laughs> and then I started making a little bit more money. Right. Cause learning a little bit more in business. I'm still working 90 hours a week. I'm like, Oh my God, this truck's going to break down and I'm paying these taxes. But, like, but now I can't get out. There's crackhead neighbors stealing stuff off our porch and like, I still haven't seen my family. My wife is screaming at me, threatening to divorce me, and I'm making more money now. Now I got to go get insurance. And it felt like this nonstop nightmare uphill battle. That, and then once I finally got taxes and insurance taken care of, then all my equipment started breaking down because <laughs> I wasn't maintaining it. Yep. And it was a nightmare, dude. And the harder I worked, the more everything fell apart. And the more my wife screamed at me, the more my father would guilt trip me because I never went out to dinner with him anymore. The more I was a piece of crap because I didn't show up at the cemetery at my mother's gravestone with, to meet my little sister on Mother's Day because I was working. The more that the family hated me because I didn't show up for family dinners on Sundays. And I, when I did show up to family dinners, I was in anxiety and I was looking at my phone. What the hell is wrong with Keith? Keith has a mental illness. We need to have an intervention with him. There's something wrong with Keith. You're a fucking asshole, Keith. You're a piece of shit. I can't believe it. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get my fucking life together. <laughs> it's like you become this person where you're the enemy of everybody and everybody hates you and you're a piece of shit. So I'd be in my truck and now I got an employee. And one day I started punching the steering wheel, screaming like a psychopath, dude, going, I'm only one motherfucker. I'm only one guy. I'm only, I'm trying my hardest. I'm doing everything I can every single second of every single day. I would fucking have these pan, these panic attack tantrum breakdowns in front of my wife screaming. Uh, I wasn't like a violent person, but it, I would be pushed to the point where I would say, I'm only one dude. Go find another fucking dude who will fucking give you everything you want because I'm a fucking broke piece of shit. And I hated myself, dude. I used to go look in the mirror and punch myself in the face because uh, I hadn't done that in a long time. But dude, I <laughs> dude, it's... fucking hated myself, bro. I And I love the physical pain and I deserve, I felt that I deserved it for being such a piece of shit and not getting my life together. And it all goes back down. What the fuck were you doing we need playing a, Mortal we Kombat need a when you were 14? bleep button huh? over here, dude. We need a bleep. I don't have a bleep button what? installed. <laughs> A bleep button. A, 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 a bleep button for your for your curse words, dude. Oh, people, <laughs> people get mad and say you're a piece of shit, Kelsey. Why do you say the f word? I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. When I talk like that, all these people are like, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so sorry, dude. You're you good. Wanna you're redo good. The whole podcast. No. <laughs> but uh, what I, I, when you told me that when you were talking about that. 
I wanted to, to mention this is a funny point that like Brian and I always talk about Brian's lawn maintenance is when your family's like mad that you're working like family dinners on Sunday, dude, what, what are you doing? I thought you, Keith, I thought you owned your own business. So there's nobody telling you that you have to work. Why can't you just be here? And like it, that just makes me just so, ah, like cringe inside dude, because that's the mindset that people have. And that's the wrong mindset for business. Hey, if these people really cared about you, they wouldn't be sucking on you like leeches and guilt tripping you for trying to be successful. They would say, go out and get it. I know you can't make it, but it's cool. Eat. You just go do it. You got this. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk once said, why do you work 80 hours a week? He said, maybe because I'm so uncomfortable with where I'm at in my life that I'm willing to work 80 hours a week to change it. Yep. Yep. So, I started thinking that, oh my God, what if I have mental illness? What if I am, something's wrong with me? What if I really am a sociopath and I am a <laughs> fatal mask at work? And, and you're, you're running around because when you're a small business owner, it's not like you clock out and you're done. We all know that. But there's these weird visions that I have. They're esoteric, esoteric, uh, they're etheric visions. They're symbolic. They come through me in deep moments of pain. And that's why pain teach is a great uh, teacher. It, it, you, you dip into the hologram where you see, I see myself like running, but I'm not right now. I see like eternity. And it's like, uh, I don't know. You're on train tracks. You've got a train in front of you and a train behind you. Ah, here was the vision. Here's what it was. I always felt like I was running on a train track, but there was a train behind me right on my heels going honk, 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 honk. And I was, and every time, uh, I couldn't run. Now I'm stuck on the front of this train, like a, like a Looney Tunes. And my, my face is being peeled back by the wind and I'm screaming and I can't get off the speeding locomotive. And I get on the phone with my buddy, coach Rob, he's one of my very good friends. He's, I talk about him in my videos. He, he said that, you know, the train is on the track, but maybe you're not set up to take turns at such high speeds. Like this is why you feel this chaos because you, you, what you resist persists and you have these, uh, there's these levels of psycho, emotional and psychological development. It's basically personal development and all these things that you need to learn and go through. And once you grow on the inside and your self worth grows and you realize that the story that you're telling yourself in your head and all these stories are possibly victim stories. That's just all going on in your head. This entire fabric and network that you believe who you believe that you are, it's all just a whole combination, a culmination of a bunch of stories in your head solidified into this person that you call you. It's nothing more than a matrix. So because when you look around and you say, well, how are all these other people living in these nice homes and driving nice cars and they got food on the table and these people are crushing it? But why am I still struggling with all that? And it's so hard to swallow the brutal reality and look within and say, ah, it's me. There's something I'm not taking responsibility for. There's something I'm resisting. There's something, it's just facing brutal realities. But then you get to the point where it's not hard anymore. Now you become excited. Instead of looking out as a victim and saying, how are all these other people doing it? It's so hard for me. You start saying, oh my God, these other people are doing it. That means that it actually works. I got this friend who, who, who hit a quarter million in his business. And that means it's possible. Let me get on the phone with him instead of getting upset about what he has and what I don't have and how it'll never work for me. Let me get on the phone with him and find out how did he do that? Let's figure that thing out. Let's revise my contracts. Let's get my marketing together. Let's, let's become proactive. And at some point when you start thinking that way, you've beat down so many of the demons in your life and so many of the Goliaths and you've overcome so many hurdles and obstacles to the point where now your plate is finally clean. And now you're here and you've, you're ready to, 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 to speed it up and take on more challenges. I, dude, I've been through so many struggles and so much head trash. I've been to live events around all these other alpha males that were making way more money than I was. And I felt so ashamed of myself that I didn't even open my mouth and talk because I knew that it would expose how much of a wuss <laughs> I was 
Well, dude, uh, on that point, that's kind of like we had this conversation a couple weeks ago when you know Brian hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Um, you hit a hundred thousand subscribers. You know, Stan, uh, he hit on a hundred thousand subscribers in like 2017. But, but I was telling you, I was like, you can either try to to sit in your own sadness and be like, what? Why isn't? Why did I not hit a hundred thousand subscribers? And and like that, it can be that way with the size of your business. It can be that way with the size of your bank account whatever like people have different dreams and aspirations but for me it's like i want to grow my youtube channel it's like well now this is my mindset it's i can't believe like i never thought it was possible like i never thought a a thou like geek to free keith calfis stan had like 1500 subscribers and i was like 1500 how is that even possible like I will never get there, uh, and, and now it's it, it's at a different level. Now it's a hundred thousand. How how is that even possible? But now we know that that is even a level that we can get to, and that's how you need to change your mindset. Because once again, Keith, nobody cares if you're winning. Nobody cares if you're losing. So like, just follow where you want to go. Like I applaud I applauded Stan when he hit on a hundred thousand I applauded Brian when he hit a hundred thousand I applauded Keith when he hit a hundred thousand because now we know you guys have plowed through that and now we know that that's even possible when you go and talk to a guy that has you know a a, a 25 million dollar lawn care company you know that that's possible now so, like, don't just look at it as like, oh, well, little Blake will just never be that. That's that's a terrible mindset, dude. That You need to be like, man, what can I learn from this guy? And I think the cliche dude. thing, I think the key, cliche thing, oh. Keith, of like, uh, you know, we don't ever want to take anything from that guy. I want to do what I can do to help him. You know, there's not much you can do to help, you know, help a guy that's, making 25 million so the the most you can do is try to not annoy him and and try to just get some type of energy from him sorry keith go ahead something uh helped me tremendously i started coaching myself because i got coaches i pay people to help me i have like people like all types of great advice and money gets you access when you start making money spend it on online courses coaching coaching groups, live events, mastermind events, the more you can get around successful people is the more it'll rub off on you. Like for instance, uh, real quick, before I say what I'm about to say, I, I, I have a bookkeeper, uh, Dan Plata from blue skies bookkeeping. He's a, a finance major and in the process of him getting his whole business launched. Cause now I have a dedicated bookkeeper. It's not him, but these guys track every single transaction in and out in my businesses. And it's, they give me P and L statements, spreadsheets, uh, uh, balance sheets, income, all this stuff. And it's, it's tremendously helped with my, my CPA and my taxes and all that stuff. But in the process, you know, that cost me a couple thousand bucks to get all my stuff reconciled and all put together. Cause I was trying to manage it all myself. But anyways, that was a huge leap for me last year was just impeccable finances. And, um, in this process of paying this Dan Platt guy, all this money, which, to him probably wasn't a lot of money because he's got a couple seven figure businesses. I learned a tremendous amount about taxes, the tax code, finances, bookkeeping, spreadsheets and stuff that I was uh, terrified previously, not terrified, uh, very frustrated. I, I, it takes a totally different type of brain set to go out and install landscapes with your physical hands than to sit down in front of a computer and balance all of every single transact. Like how do you even do that? But when I finally got to the point where I was ready and amped up, I learned so much when the student is ready, the teacher will appear when you're ready and you stand up one day, one morning, one hour, one minute, one moment, you go, I'm ready now for this in my life. Boom. It'll appear and it'll hit you the right person or opportunity will come along. And dude, I was able to ask him deep, deep, deep questions about, uh, finances 
that changed my life. I never, I am so excited about finances, <laughs> but uh, think about how, it, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. Here's the thing that really started helping when I started coaching myself. Stop being a little bitch. <laughs> so many, dude, I'm telling you so many times myself, as soon as I start getting to a funk at like, I go, what are you doing, Keith? And I'm afraid to make that phone call or call that client or go up to that customer and tell them the price is going to be this or, or go have a pep talk with an employee. What the fuck are you doing, Keith? I look at my eyes in the mirror, quit being a little bitch. <laughs> you got this because my emotions want to be a little bitch. And I say, no, nope. who are you becoming? Is this who you're going to become? You're going to become a little bitch because if you don't face this now and you don't do this right now, you're done. You're flatlining and you're just going to keep going in circles. And now you're a victim and this is not, and time is going by. You don't know. You're not going to live forever. Life is finite. And I think about what Gary Vaynerchuk says, the ner- you go to the nursing home and you see the, 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 the regret in people's faces. Quit being a little bitch. Dude, I have so many of my areas in my life to grow, obviously, but that's helped me tremendously. Just quit being a bitch. It's that. And like a lot of, a lot of the things that you're worrying about or whatever is you are just overthinking it. Like the truth is dude, like the, the successful people that we work for or whatever, if you're, t- if you're doing like, incredible work and you're going above and beyond and picking up the trash that blew into their yard every week and the yard looks great. They don't have any problems. They don't have to do any extra work for you to, to, you know, take care of their property. They really don't care about a a little bit of price increase or like any of the crap that we worry about. You know what I mean? Like, dude, we just overthink everything. and, And I am, I will tell you straight up that I am the worst about it, dude. Yeah, just quit being a bitch. <laughs> no, I call, dude. I call you up, dude. Guys, I call up Blake, dude. I had an issue just literally a week ago that was driving me insane, and I called you up because you called me up and you were going through that thing too, and we solved it on the phone together. So it was about having somebody in your life who's on a similar path where you can talk these things out with. Be like, oh my God, you go through that too? We both need to quit being a little bitch. Yeah, and just and having you a different on perspective the phone. too. Yeah. Perspective. What do experts get paid for? Their perspective. So if you're an expert landscape escaper, that customer is paying you for your perspective. Yeah. If you're a great boss, a leader, a husband, a father, a friend, a coach, anything that you do, perspective. Absolutely, dude. Because because a lot of this stuff, somebody just needs to either show you that it's possible or just lay it out in front. Like a lot of the things that I think I can't do or think that I don't know how to do. It's like my mind just wants you to write down the steps and give it to me. And then I know how to do it. But like, you already know what the steps are. You know what I mean? Like people know that they need to invest money. People know that they need to save money for winter time. But when you're in the moment, you, you don't even follow the own steps that you already know. You need somebody to write them down and say, don't do this. Don't spend your freaking winter fund on a new truck or this or whatever, dude. Ah. Yeah. So look at everything very pragmatically. Don't make any decisions when you're under, you're hijacked by your emotions. Don't make decisions off of what other dude. I want to tell the story on a YouTube video one time uh, when Eric and I were starting our businesses. Eric just took off and he built a million dollar business in like a year. Now he's at five million. And but I was still living in that one bedroom apartment and eating ramen noodles. And one rainy morning, 
he called me up. He's like, bro, it's raining. We're not working. I'm like, we're not working either. He's like, dude, I got an idea. Let's go to the park where the trails are. And we're going to run through the trails in the rain. And we're going to have fun and get rained on and just be warriors. And I'm like, let's do it. So next thing you know, we're running. It's a spring morning. It's raining. We're running through the woods and through trees and trails. And we're getting all wet. And like, it was just pure masculine warrior type of shit. And I was like, this is awesome. I'll never forget that. I got to remind him of that. And then when we were done, we are sitting in the truck and we're drinking some water. And we're like, what do you want to do now? He's like, dude, let's go to Whole Foods and get some big, healthy, organic salads. I'm like, let's do it. So we go to these uh, Whole Foods and he he fills up this monster salad at the salad bar. You know, just all this healthy, organic stuff. And I make a salad too. And then we're going through the register and he rings up his salad and his salad was like 24 bucks. (laughs) That's exactly what I was going to say is that thing was probably really expensive. (laughs) So I, and then all of a sudden my whole heart dropped and my salad was $22, bro. And I was so scared. But when you, so when you hang out with friends who are, make a lot of money, you better be very, very careful because everything that they do, it costs five times more. And, um, so I rang up my $22 salad and I was like, not happy, dude. I was like, um, I don't buy $22 salads, bro. And I'm eating this salad and I was like, and, and that dude, that affected me. So, and then another time I was sitting in the truck uh, with Eric, it was like the following winter. I finally got my business off the ground and now he's doing like 2 million. He's already completely out of debt. He already bought a new house and I'm sitting in his brand new truck with him. And we, uh, we met for lunch at the mall. And then I was like, dude, man, I'm trying to pay off this debt. And I got these debt collectors calling me. I old, old, I owe some old electricity bill and this and that. It's like, gosh, I had paid it down from like 27,000 all the way down to like $6,500 left in debt and student loan debt and stuff. And, um, that's why I was still stuck in that one bedroom apartment because I said, I'm not upgrading my lifestyle until I've paid off these debts until I got a tag, until I have established business. I am not Robert Kiyosaki said, do not upgrade your lifestyle until your shit is paid off. And you were, cause you're a dumbass and you will pay a hefty price. To be. So anyways, and Eric looks at me, he's like, how much do you owe in debt total? I'm like, uh, 6,500 bucks, dude. He's like, what are you doing? Why don't you just pay it all off? <laughs> he's like, pay it off right now. What are you doing? Why would you do that? Are you like, but he wasn't judging me. He was being serious because he had, he could have just made a couple phone calls and paid off all his debt. Right. And I was like, I felt really, really insecure. And then I would come home back. Eric's one of my best friends. And, um, but I would come back home and I would throw this little victim fit to my wife in our little tiny apartment about, how I just hung out with Eric. And she's like, every time you hang out with Eric, you come home in a bad mood. Is he bragging to you about how much money he's making? I'm like, no, he's not bragging to me. He's just sharing because we grew up in the trailer park. No, I think he's actually bragging to you. He's trying to make you feel bad because she didn't get the context. She doesn't understand our relationship unless she was just trying to stick up for me. And then the day came where, you know, I did like a $10,000 landscape job and I had some money in the bank. I said, you know what, dude, I made the phone calls and I, spent an entire day paying off of the debt, getting those like reconciliation letters. I got on the phone with TransUnion, Equifax, and Experion, and I spent a whole nother day calling the debt, submitting the paperwork, making sure that everything got uh, discharged off of my accounts, and went to work at building my credit score from like, it was like a 512 or something really bad, and I got my credit score all the way up to, it's like 807 right now, with perfect credit and no debt and all that stuff, and it took years to do that. And um, that's what the journey looks like. And, and then I start having these conversations with Eric that are at a different level. Now we're eating $22 salads together. <laughs> now we don't care about that stuff. But then Eric pulls up in a fucking look, dog, I just dropped $37,000 on an RV camper. And it nope, look, I pressed the button and the wall slides out. The wall slides out. I'm on a $37,000 RV camper. He's like, I just bought a cottage up north. A oh, cottage up north. And then I go to his house. He's like, we're selling our house. I'm like, you just bought it. It's a, it's a mini mansion. <laughs> No, I just bought a mansion now. <laughs> oh, you just bought a mansion? I go to his new house, and then I go home with my head down on my tail between my legs. My wife's like, every time you hack, I'm like, he just bought a mansion. 
Motherfucker just spent $200,000 just getting a pool installed. So then I go home and I'm like, so it's, it's amazing to have, he's one of like several, I think I'm the brokest friend that I have, bro. But that that's <laughs> the group you want to be around because oh, I would yeah, rather dude. be the, the last place on a team of winners than, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I forget what the saying is exactly, but I would rather be the brokest friend out of the rich friends than the richest friend out of the broke friends. I am the brokest friend I have, bro. All my friends are fucking loaded. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, you're, if you're around that, you're going to, your life will step up. It's just a different tier. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not, an always chasing money thing, but that's just how it works. If you surround yourself with people that are just crushing it, you're naturally yeah, just going to be aimed in the correct direction Wait, and they're going to pull you up. I got to tell you this. So, uh, last summer we went to Minnesota to Stan genetics house. It was, uh, Brian and his wife and me and my wife. And, we pull up at Stan's house and we're like, whoa, this is the house in the videos. Yeah. And a squirrel, monkey squirrel <laughs> flies across and lands on my shoulder. I'm like, hi, <laughs> squirrel. And he's got all this property. I'm like, and then uh, it was so, it's a beautiful home and Stan's very successful and it's normal to Stan. And Stan's a crazy, wild his life is like a TV show. So he's like, all right, we're, let's go up North. I'm like up North. He's like, yeah, we're going to my little cottage up North. I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to get... So then we drive an hour up North and we get there and it's an entire property with like a house and a guest house and a lake and a boat and, uh, you know, and a, and a lake. And, and I'm like, uh, and me and Brian are looking at each other like, uh, what's going on here? He's like, let's eat dinner. And his wife's cooking steak. <laughs> so when we're eating steak dinner, sitting there in this like beautiful cottage, um, I'm like, what kind of steak is this? This is good. And then Brian's got steak and a one sauce dripping down his face. And he's at the table with me. I'm like, he's like, oh, rich people steak. <laughs> Right in front of Stan's wife, he's like, oh, is this how rich people live? Because this is rich people's steak. <laughs> it was so funny because me and Brian grew up in the trailer park. And then uh, Stan's like, come with me. Uh, we have to go pick up a boat I just bought. And then we go and we pick up this boat. That and It was like a, a very fun time. And it's like it's very fun to be around successful people that don't they have limitations. They don't let self-limiting beliefs stop them. They live in a world of an imagination. And they when they have a vision, they, they make it happen. They don't live in limitations. They live in abundance. Yeah. But here's the thing is like, they were like, I remember, I don't remember what year exactly, but Brian's lawn maintenance, dude, this guy, this guy messaged me when he had like a couple hundred subscribers. Okay. And he's like, hey, dude, I need a shout out. <laughs> we joke about this all the time. He's like, dude, I want a shout out. Can I get a shout out? And I'm like, dude, who is this guy? And I met him at that GIE this year. That guy had no doubt in his mind he was going to be successful. Like, And I'm not saying he wasn't successful before YouTube or whatever, but I'm saying he had no doubt in his mind that like all of this was going to happen in his life. Stan, the whole time I've known Stan, I've known Stan since, what, 2014 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Never a doubt in his mind that, like, his success would be where it is today. Like, it's just sometimes people only see people, like successful people, at, at that certain timeline of their journey, but, like, it's the mindset you 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 have to do what rich people do before you can be rich, and rich oh, people rich rich people a, they don't they they're not rich people aren't just like buying like Gucci like they say all the Gucci and Louis Vuitton and all that Th like those are those brands thrive off of not rich people trying to look rich, you know what I mean like like they like wealthy people. 
Like you see like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, he's walking around in a t-shirt and like jeans, dude. Because, but what I'm saying, what I'm getting at is like acting rich isn't buying a bunch of crap. It's saving money, having a plan for your money, a plan for your life, investing in your future. Yes. Dude, you just made me think of something. I know a guy who had who has a business. He's successful. He did uh, 330000 last year, and he'll do more this year. Dang. For a long time, he couldn't get on his feet. He just had a little tiny business, and he was struggling to make it all work, and he didn't really have any equipment, and he just had the basics, and he worked and lived day by day. And he was broke in the winter and his life was kind of a victim struggle nightmare story. And he was very pissed off and resentful at other small business owners that were making it all work and becoming successful. And it it couldn't, he just couldn't get it together. I don't know why. And I realized it was a story he was telling himself in his head. He was just stuck in this victim mindset and there was so much potential built up energy one moment about a year and a half ago, this guy snapped and he became a complete asshole. Like this, this was his process. He cut everybody off. He stopped caring about what other people had and what other people were doing, what other people were achieving that he wasn't and how he couldn't do it, how it wasn't going to work for him and how the rug was going to get pulled out from underneath him. If he did like all this, this stories And he finally just started focusing on what Robert Kiyosaki says, mind your own business. When you focus on what you have going on in your life and your business, not what everybody else is going on or not what your friend is doing that you're not focus on you and on your business. And you're even if what you're doing is just a fraction of what they're doing. Even if you're only making 50 grand this year in your whole business and you only have a little bit of stuff to work with, that's fine. Let, let your ego aside and focus on what you have going on and fall in love with your business and your process and do what you need to do for your business. He, like a, like a, like a, a magnifying glass focused over a newspaper, he developed a white hot focus on his own business and cut everything else out. And this guy exploded. Within a year, and I've never seen somebody grow so fast. It was like one of those things you put it in water and it just expands like the dinosaur thing. I'm like, like, dude, he literally caught like five lost years all compressed into one year. And this guy got, dude, he got so much stuff and so much together and so much money in the bank. He just exploded like boom. And it was like, whoa, how did you do that? And like, uh, I watched this guy cry because he was able to do it all. And the only thing that changed is he started believing in himself. And when you believe in yourself, dude, you can make miracles happen. Uh, uh, Stephen R. Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is one of the best-selling books of all time. He says your circle of influence is what you can control and what you can't control. When you focus on what you can control, your circle of influence expands. But when you focus outside of your circle of influence on the things you can't control, yep. then your circle of influence actually shrinks smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you're just like a guy living in a basement and you have no control over it. You have no influence at all. And you have to be very, have discernment over what you can and can't control. Stop worrying about the shit you can't control or the thing the things at large that you can't do anything about and focus on what you can control. And then the more you start to focus on that is the more you start to realize, Oh my God, I actually have way more control over these situations and scenarios in my life and in my business than I ever thought I did, but you didn't have a clarity around that. So now you can make finer and finer distinctions and have clarity and you can get all, dude, you can do beautiful things in your life. You can, be in a whole new place. Even this year in 2021, I'm telling you, June, July, by June, July, you could be in a totally different position and have a phenomenal, but it takes a lot of responsibility. You got to be very accountable. And because and, and, when you believe in yourself, this magical thing happens. The moment you get committed, you say, you know what? I'm committed to this process. And when you decide, which means to cut, you decide all of a sudden the right employees show up. You don't, you have employees that are now respecting you. 
your spouse respects you more, all of a sudden you have respect for yourself. Your clients are now signing up more often and, and at higher dollar amounts than before. When you believe in yourself and you have confidence and you, uh, you, you draw your lines in the sand and you're not a pushover, that's when things start uh, working out in your favor. And it's very logical too. It's very pragmatic. If you look at it from the outside, say, I, how, how would this person or this situation respond if I was weak? And I, and I let, you know, dude, I, I've watched it happen in my life way too many times, uh, both sides of the equation. And now I have irrefutable proof that uh, I can be successful because I said so. And just like Stan, just like Brian, just like Eric, like the people we're talking about, bro, when you have confidence, other people stand up. They, it's, it's just, yeah, dude. <laughs> it, it's attractive. It, like, I think humans yeah. are just like, like if you think back and gosh, dude, we could talk forever about this, but like, if you go back to like, uh, you know, having parents as a child or being in school, having teachers, somebody in charge. Humans are raised and attracted to somebody that knows what's going on, somebody that knows what to do. And so like when somebody just has so much confidence where they just they 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 just do it. They just know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like even if they don't know what they're doing, they think they know what they're doing and they just do it. And people are just naturally attracted to that. And like I I as I've it's funny, I'm stuttering right now, but like through the whole YouTube thing, I've had like a, a, a little bit of stutter or like I say, uh, here, or, um, or like, and what I noticed was if I was talking to a client like that and I'm like, um, um, we, uh, uh, we need to raise your price, um, Mrs. Jones, because like I have, you know, my expenses are getting higher. She's gonna be like, what in the world? What are you talking about? And you're probably going to walk away with uh, either no client or at the same price because she she knew that you weren't confident enough in telling her that the price was being raised. But if you just went up there, hey, Miss Jones, you know, with everything going on here, our, uh, our expenses went up. If they raised the minimum wage up to fifteen dollars, our prices are going to have to go up, and we're going to have to be able to explain that to our clients. And if you just go up there with your head down and you're like, ah, oh, well. But if you go up there with confidence and say, hey, we want to still provide the, ex the the same incredible service that we've been providing for years, uh, just the way of the world, some things have gotten more expenses, our, our gas went up or our employee payroll or whatever, even if you don't want to go into that, she's going to feel that, hey, he's being honest, he's being trustworthy, and he just has to do this. This is just the way of the world. Um People just are attracted to that, man. And what is confidence? Confidence is your belief in your ability to figure things out. Absolutely. That's a good one. I'm fired up, dude. Heck yeah, dude. Well, let's I love leave everything them, you just said. Let's leave them off on this high note, dude. This is... Uh, Really incredible. We're we're a little bit over an hour here, and I think everybody just got left off with a a nice little pep talk there. So I'm super excited. 2021 here with Keith Kalfas. And anything else you got to say, man? Make sure you guys check out Keith Kalfas on YouTube, on Instagram. And uh, it's been great talking with you, buddy. Yo, thanks, Blake. Thanks everybody for uh, hanging out, and I. Uh, Hope to meet you soon in person and shake your hand. Check me out. Uh, yeah, Keith Kelfus and go to my website, keithkelfus.com. And I have a podcast as well called the Untrapped Podcast. And I think we just had a quarter million downloads. And I'm That's very awesome. excited about that. And check over there uh, on Apple and uh, hit me up, dog. Awesome. Thanks, cool, man. Well, guys, stay positive. We're going to send it over to Mr. Producer and have a good rest of your day. for listening to the B&B Lawn Care Podcast. We hope you got some golden nuggets that you can implement into your lawn and landscaping business. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure and leave us a five-star review. 
Connect with us on all social media platforms by searching at BB Lawn Care KC. Keep grinding, keep striping, and stay positive out there, friends. 